Welcome to Biomedia United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor. Thank you for being with us this day. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can be in your presence, lifting up our joys in our life, entrusting our cares, our prayer requests to you, hearing your word read, hearing your word proclaimed and being in holy fellowship with you and one another in this space. Be with us now as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a praise report, a joy to share, please put it in comments or send us a, an email at Bayumito United Methodist Church at arumc.org. You can leave a comment on our YouTube channel, Biomedia United Methodist Church, or on our Facebook page, Biomedia UMC. We hope to hear from you soon. Our call to worship today comes from the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. If you'll follow along with me in your Bibles, that Psalm 91 in the Old Testament of your Bible, verses 9 through 16, beginning in verse 9. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's now our tradition in our virtual service to have a time of silent prayer, followed by a prayer that I will pray. Today, I'm going to pray for the Ukraine and for all of us as well. Will you bow with me in silence? How great thou art, O God, how great thou art. We thank you for the love that you have for us that is unconditional, invitational, and transformational. A love that you had for us before we were born. Your prevenient grace preparing the way for us to come into this world. As we seek your son, Jesus, and accept his invitation to follow him, we are justified with your justifying grace and receive your invitational love. And as we follow your son Jesus and his teachings and draw closer to him, we are transformed by your transformational love. And on this day that we remember that your son gave his life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and that you raised him on the third day, giving us eternal life with you. Today, we pray for the people of Ukraine as they continue to face a brutal invasion by Russia. We pray for those courageous citizens who are resisting the invasion of their nation, and we ask that you protect them as they seek to protect their beloved country. We pray for President Zelensky as he shows the world that he means to be and is a servant leader. Encourage him as he leads his people in these perilous days. We pray for all others around the world who are speaking out against Russian aggression, including the Russian citizens who do so at their own peril. 
and those who are acting to help Ukraine counter the Russian incursion. Embolden them all to act swiftly and decisively to help end this tragedy. We pray, too, God, that your Holy Spirit will change President Putin's heart and he repents and ends his sinful actions. We pray that Russian citizens will rise and pressure their leaders to stop this madness. And we pray, pray that any meetings between the Ukrainian and Russian delegations will be able to help end the violence. But Lord, even as we pray these things, we pray for the peace that we know is your will. Peace for the Ukraine. Peace for your world mired in violence. And Lord, yes, peace in our own hearts so that those of us who call the Prince of Peace our Lord and our Savior will be peacemakers. We pray these things in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, and the first 13 verses. Will you follow along with me as I read from the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, the first 13 verses, beginning in verse 1. This is when Jesus was tested in the wilderness. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you're the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world, and he told him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It's been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil then led him to Jerusalem and had him Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that they will not you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until another time. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When you were or are in school, do you like taking tests? Are you a good test taker? When I take a test, I tend to overthink the question, whatever it may be. But one thing I've learned is to never be tempted to second guess myself and change the answer. You see, too many times when that temptation was too great and I changed an answer, I missed it 99% of the time. We're on the edge of the season of Lent, the first Sunday in Lent. It's an opportune time to talk about temptation. And I find it interesting that immediately after Jesus was baptized, he was led out into the wilderness by the Spirit, where he spent 40 days tempted by the devil and didn't eat a bite that entire time. And today, today we have trouble deciding what we will give up, if anything, at Lent. Perhaps we have trouble giving up something for 40 days because we can't bear to do without chocolate. 
Cokes, cigarettes, alcohol, ice cream, cake, pie, dessert, baked potatoes, the list goes on. Or maybe we can't do without our cell phones. Maybe we can't do without social media. Maybe we can't do without others in our life. We don't have to. We don't have to. But we can give up something. We can give up a bad habit. We can take on a new habit. But think of, and stop a minute. Just stop a minute and think. Giving up any of the things I've mentioned for 40 days is no more than a pinch of salt compared to what Jesus endured in the wilderness. And he did it for us, for you, and for me, for all of us. What are you giving up for the next six weeks? Or are you giving up anything? You can take on a new habit during Lent, as I mentioned, such as doing no harm each day, doing good each day, reading the Bible each day, maybe just one verse, maybe two verses, maybe a verse you've never read before. Or maybe during the 40 days you read one of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Or maybe you read all four. Are the devotions in the daily sanctuary booklet or another devotion? The list goes on what we can do. We can take up a new habit of not saying bad words. Get my drift? We can fast from a food or a beverage for 40 days. Take on a new habit. And any time we do that, we will never give up or take on more than Jesus did when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. In these 40 days where we are now, we get a glimpse of evil and more than a glimpse of the true nature of Jesus Christ. Lent is about self-examination and confession and facing our own mortality. As in the words, when the ashes are imposed on our foreheads in an Ash Wednesday service, which Biomita was unfortunate to not be able to have this year. But when we have an Ash Wednesday service, I impose ashes on your forehead in the shape of a cross. And when I impose the ashes, I say, Dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Remembering our own mortality. We're marked with mortality for this solemn season of Lent, these 40 days. You see, Lent's more than a simple reminder of the temporary condition, nature of our human condition. It's an invitation to reorder our existence, temporary or eternal. Take on new things. Give up the bad confess our sins, put them behind us, and move forward with Jesus Christ. We can begin our journey with Christ in the wilderness because that's where we live. Yes, we live in a wilderness. There are all kinds of wilderness. We don't have to be in a desert or in a forest alone or somewhere alone without anyone around. Because in the wilderness, Jesus was tempted in every way that we're tempted every day. He was hungry because we're hungry and hurting. He was tempted by the thought of shortcuts because we are tempted by shortcuts. Take a shortcut through the filling station parking lot to get around the corner and not sit at the stoplight. Take a shortcut. Find an answer to a test before taking the test. That's wrong. That's a sin. The devil tempted Jesus with a shortcut to the cross, but none of these temptations were in God's plan, and Jesus did not yield to temptation. Sometimes it seems to me that we translate temptation into the tug we feel to have another donut, or the desire to sleep in instead of getting up and going to that meeting we're supposed to attend or to follow desires we shouldn't follow. When we wrestle with temptation, we can be led astray. Yes, we can, unless we have faith and trust in Jesus Christ, 
who is with us every moment and will help us to avoid going astray. And yes, we all go astray at some time. We all slip away, whether it's age, whether it's situational, whether it's hurt, whatever it may be. We slip away, we slide away from Jesus and the church. But you know what? We can come back anytime. He will welcome us with open arms. Your church will welcome you with open arms because that's the kind of love that Jesus has. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. His love never ceases. He loves us no matter what we've ever done or haven't done or might do in the future. Jesus' experience in the desert teaches us to live fully engaged, fully engaged to think through the implications of our actions as well as our intentions. Jesus encourages us to find opportunities as we meet the challenges of this world wrapped in the word, confident in the presence of the Spirit with us always. The Holy Spirit is with us always. And when we are in this wilderness, especially in this 40 days of the season of Lent, as we check ourselves out, as we search deep to see what we should give up or what we should take on, even though it may be challenging, we can find new opportunities, new opportunities to do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Watch for them. Will you pray with me? Loving God, lead us through the wilderness of Lent, showing us the opportunities that come our way and the challenges we face in this world that are wrapped in the word. May our faith be strong and confident, knowing, knowing that you are with us every moment of every day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you in a wilderness? Well, we all are in a wilderness, aren't we? But are you seeking a way out of your wilderness? Then come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and live. Live a new life in Jesus Christ. You can do it where you are now. Say, Lord, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I put all my sins behind me. I for forgive me. I want to follow you today. And have a new life with you. Receive the benediction. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. By Omega United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Ann Nelson, pastor. We hope to see you back next Sunday on YouTube channel by Omega United Methodist Church. Facebook page, Biomedia UMC. You may email us at B-A-Y-O-U-M-E-T-O, -E United Methodist Church, at A-R-U-M-C dot O-R-G, Biomedia United Methodist Church, at A-R-U-M-C dot O-R-G, or leave a comment or a message on our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. Until we meet again, may God bless you.